Hello and welcome back. In the previous lecture, we have installed PySpark on your PC. But it is not enough for development purposes. And we cannot write a whole Spark script from the command line. So in this lecture, we are going to install some ID in your Windows PC. So for this full course, we are going to use Anaconda distribution which comes with various tools like Spider ID as well as the Jupyter Notebook which will get you started with PySpark learning. So without further ado, let's get into it. Okay, so let's get started with our Apache PySpark ID setup. So as you can see, Anaconda distribution is a good product for any developer in the field of data science because it comes with various tools like Jupyter Notebook, Spider. So these tools we are going to use in this tutorial as well as it comes with Panda, NumPy and several other libraries which we are going to use in the subsequent lectures. So without wasting any time, let's go to your favorite browser and search for Anaconda distribution. Okay, so here search for Anaconda distribution and go to the anaconda.com websites which will lead you to the installation link. So as you can see, they comes with different repositories as we have discussed, so just click on download. So it's a 620 MB, so it may take some time. So just wait for it to complete. Okay, so once it's downloaded, just open the file and it's a simple installation process. Just click next, click agree and you can select just me, which is recommended. So as I already told you that this space between the username can cause an issue going forward. So just save aside, go to C drive and here in C drive, you can create your own folder, Anaconda. So just click on OK and you can just extract it here. Click on next. So in the advanced option, you don't have to select anything. Just click on install and it will take some time. So just wait for it to complete. OK, so there you go. The installation is completed. So click on next. Then next and you can just uncheck these boxes because you don't need that now. So just click on finish and that's it. That's all you need to do to install your ID in Windows PC. So just quickly we can check our installation. So if you can go to the windows and search for spider. So it's a spider with Y. So just click on spider. So this is the ID which we are going to use for writing our spark applications. Okay, so as you can see, this is how the spider ID looks like. So let's run some code and see if it's running fine or not. But before going forward, we need to install our PySpark module first so that we can get started with our PySpark coding. So all you can do is go to Windows and type Anaconda and it will lead you to the Anaconda prompt. So just click on that. And here you can run only one command, which is pip install PySpark. That's it. Hit enter and it will install your PySpark module. So first it is downloading the tar file now and then it will extract so that you can use it in your programs. So it's now running the setup for PySpark. So as you can see here successfully installed the PySpark package. So you can close this prompt and now you can start writing your PySpark code. So the entry point of every Spark application is the Spark session. So the first step would be you have to import the package. So this is not going to be the tutorial for it, we are going to cover it in the upcoming lectures. So for now, just remember that we have to import the modules first. So our module name is from PySpark.SQL. Just import the Spark session. So after that, you have to create the Spark session. So for creating it, just type like Spark is equal to Spark session dot builder, which is a method which we are going to discuss dot the master. So we have to select the master here. So we will give it as local because we are we don't have any cluster of our own. Then we have the app name. So app name could be anything. So we'll just give it as test and then we can give get or create to create our Spark session. That's it. So our Spark session is all set up and now you can create your data frame. So I just have some data lying around. So I'll just create data frame on top of that. So this is the data. I'll just paste it over here. So as you can see here, we have the first name, the middle name, the last name, date of birth, the gender and the salary. So we have to define the schema now. So we will keep it in the list. So we'll have the columns, which is the empty list and we will put the column names here. So first is first name. Then we have the middle name. Then we have the last name, the date of birth. Then we have the gender and then at last salary. 
so this is our schema so we can directly create a data frame on top of this so to do that we'll give the name to our data frame which is df which contains a spark which is spark session dot we have the function called as create data frame so just give it as create data frame and in create data frame we have to pass the data and the schema for our data frame so the data equals to data and schema equals to columns so here we go here we have the data frame so to get the metadata of our data frame you can just simply print the df dot print schema so this is the method by which you can get the schema of your data frame so just run it so as you can see this is the schema of our data frame okay so this was not a tutorial for PySpark this was just to check if our ID is running fine so you can also check it if our Jupyter notebook is running fine without any issues so to go to that just click on start and type like Jupyter notebook and hit enter so as you can see our web page is ready so to get you started we will create a new python notebook so click on python and there you go this is our notebook we can just start writing our code here and we can execute it cell by cell so in here we can write our code so we already have our spark code present so just copy that code and we'll just going to check if that is running fine or not just paste it over here and execute it and that's it you got your results so as you can see, this is how you can execute your code inside the spider ID as well as the Jupyter notebook. Whatever works for you, it's fine. At the end of the day, we are going to get our results and that's what matters. Because the syntax will not change, these are just two different development environments and it will not make any difference. So from the next lecture, let's start writing our Spark application. But also we will thoroughly understand the core API of Apache Spark. So if you have any difficulties in the installation, just let me know in the comments and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. So this is how you can set up your ID for your Apache Pi Spa. And from the next lecture, let's get started and get our hands dirty and build some amazing Pi Spa scripts. I hope you like this lecture. So please subscribe to our channel and also ring the notification bell to get the latest updates. And don't forget to follow us on our social media, which I have the link in the description below. Thanks for watching.